Hello. Today, we live in a world full of burning scientific questions. But today, we're going to try and understand one of the most important of all. And that is, why does lasing require an active medium with three or more energy levels? And your guide today will be me. First of all, there are two main processes that occur within a lasing medium. We have absorption and emission. And it is the rate at which these processes happen that determines whether we have a laser or not. First, let's have a look at what laser actually stands for. It stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. And this gives us a clue to the, as to the condition we need to laser: Amplification and stimulated emission. And we will look at these in a little bit more detail. Let's look at absorption. This is when a photon of energy E2 minus E1 is instant on an electron. The electron then absorbs this photon and uses the sub subsequent energy to excite itself from the ground state E1 into the excited state E2. This process attenuates your original photon beam as you lose energy to this excitation. And we do not want this. Now emission is a little bit awkward. As you can see there are two types of emission. Spontaneous and stimulated emission. Spontaneous emission is when an electron in the higher state release, relaxes and emits a photon of energy E2 minus E1 in a random direction. This is not good as it does not produce the directionality we want for our laser beam. So before we look at, at stimulated emission, it is important to note that not all emission is helpful. The spontaneous emission can lead to attenuation of, of the beam. Stimulated emission is our friend. This is when an incoming photon, of the direction we are lasing in, stimulates an electron in a higher energy state to relax. This causes a release of a second photon in the same direction as the in incoming photon. And the end result is that you end up with two photons from the one incoming photon, which is amplification, which is great for lasing. Now, the rate of absorption is given by this equation where N1 equals the number of atoms per unit volume at energy E1. Rho V is the density of the lasing medium, and B12 is the Einstein coefficient related to transition from E2 to E1. You don't need to worry about it too much, and you'll see why. Now, if you look at this equation for stimulated emission, you can see that it is very similar to the one for absorption. We have N2 instead of N1, where N2 is the number of of atoms per unit volume at the energy E2 and we also have the Einstein coefficient B21 which is related to a transition from E2 to E1. Now if the rate of absorption is greater than the rate of stimulated emission you end up attenuating the beam which is not what we want. What we want is for the rate of stimulated emission to be greater than the rate of absorption. If this is the case, you get amplification of your initial photon beam. However, there is a problem. B in a two-level case, B12 and B21 end up being the same due to thermal e equilibrium. That means that the rate at which electrons are excited into the higher state and the rate at which they decay from the higher into the lower state become the same in thermal equilibrium. And from the equations, you remember that it was the number of atoms in the energy state times by the density of the lasing medium times by the Einstein coefficient for that transition. If the Einstein coefficients are the same and the density of the medium is the same, you end up that the maximum rate at which, which you can get from this, a, a two-level lasing medium is N2 equals N1, and you're never going to get... <laughs> That is, until you introduce a population inversion. A population inversion simply means that you always have more electrons in a higher energy state than in the ground state. And to do this, we need to have a material with at least three energy levels. An example for us to have a look at. Here, you have a material with three energy levels, E1, E2 and E1.5. I have called it E1.5, as this is a metastable state, which means it is higher in energy than the ground state, but stable enough that it can accommodate electrons. So here we have our little electron in the ground state. 
you pump the lasing medium with some energy, exciting it, it into a higher energy state. There he is, an E2. But now, this electron does not hang around here for long. New it relaxes very quickly to E1.5 in a matter of picoseconds. This is a very fast, non-radiative transition to the metastable state. This means that no photon is released. You can think of it as a relaxation in the vibrational energies of the electron. So there is our electron in E1.5. Now, we, the process of stimulating the mission happens. We have an incoming photon, it stimulates the electron in the metastable state, causing it to decay to the ground state via stimulated emission. The reason why we need this third level is because there is a difference in the time that the electron get, spends in E2 and E1.5. Spends around picoseconds in E2 and around microseconds in E1.5. This means that at E1.5, if the process is repeated and repeated, you get a buildup of electrons in a higher energy level than the ground state, thus creating a population inversion between E1 and E1.5, which is what we need for laser amplification. So now all you evil geniuses out there know that to kill James Bond, all you need is a three-level lazy medium to create your laser. Just make sure he doesn't escape this time. Thank you very much for listening.